Hey, what's up everybody? Platform Disciple here, and today we are looking at a ranked gameplay commentary. Uh, not too much of a plan, I just want to showcase the deck I am using um, more, uh, as well as just get out a quality video for you guys to watch. Uh, right off the bat, we're playing against the Tinker Combo deck, which is by far the uh, most dominant deck in ranked i see it all the time um it's really annoying because uh even though i have uh, a sideboard catered to countering this deck even then you sometimes lose uh but we're off to a good start because we we called his lightning blast on taiga taiga is alive uh so he's gonna have to use at least one more card to kill taiga uh but it's it's just not a, a great match for us um like, already, you see, he, he has played very few cards and has developed a, an extremely powerful uh, presence in the game. I can't say board state because none of it's on the board, but it's going to come out whenever he wants. Um, the good news for us is that we have access to a splitter robot army, which is going to give us the ability to stall at least. Um, but our deck has no hard removal, so we have no answer to just their big guys, which is obviously bad. Uh, we're going to try to sneak in for some easy damage. We're also going to throw... Uh, I was thinking of throwing something under the bus just to get Taiga moving, so to speak. Um, but I think we're not going to, actually. But... Yeah, see, we're, we're taking a lot of damage, uh, and there's not really anything we can do about it at this stage of the game. Even if we were playing a removal heavy faction, or uh, a faction that was extremely aggressive like Flamed On, we'd still have to be facing overstatted characters that come out early. Uh, he has cards in hand, he's also double Varor. This is my number one favorite deck to complain about. I'm sure you guys are already getting that vibe. Uh, but there's that's it's it's the truth. It's been strong for over a year now, uh, and there's nothing that beats it. Um, and and just to justify the fact that I'm complaining, like I'm not just randomly whining. Um, I am I think 17th on the ranked ladder right now. So obviously I've been playing quite a bit. Uh, and I see nothing but this deck uh, from low-level players. Some of the higher-level players, I think, are a little more creative, but it's almost nothing but this deck, and that's very frustrating. Uh, there's no reason it should be that way. Um, hopefully, the new set is going to bring out some cards that are going to uh, change the way the game is played or change the sort of cards we're going to be looking at. But right now, uh, Tinker Combo has very few weaknesses. It's good at every stage of the game, and by that I mean uh, it's dominant early game and then transitions into a control slash combo deck late game. So there's there's really not much anyone can do about it. Uh, all we can do is just start throwing guys in the defense zone and hope we have enough gas to keep pummeling him down. But odds are uh, we probably don't. Especially since we lost our Taiga, which is a huge, huge component for us. I'm wondering whether I should play this or another Splitter Robot. If I play this, I have a much greater chance of killing any of these. Um, so I think I'm going to go for that. Uh, I can also get some additional value because I have a bunch of characters I can put out. So this is going to be at 10. Um, I could boost it up to 13. That'll be at 12. Uh, I could also boost this up, which I think... I think I'm going to boost this, because Splitter Robot is the most likely candidate to get hit by a Death Ray. Um, and we're going to put our guys like this, because we're playing from behind, which means we have to sneak in for as much damage as we can. Uh, so we, we've got a good trade set up, it looks like. Uh, and of course, Chain Lightning completely annihilates our deck. Um, so that that went from looking okay to pretty much the worst. Uh, let's see. So obviously Splitter Robot, and I think we just fire off Luca while we still have characters out. <laughs> Feels bad, but uh, I think that's our best option. 
Um, and I think we're defending with everyone right now in hopes that we kill something. Um, I'm going to... I think I'm going to put my characters... Um, I'm just... I have to figure out which character he's going to have lined up first because we're trying to get Splitter Robot to trade into something. Uh, no guarantee of it happening. But yeah, he's he's got cards in hand because Tinker is an infinite value generator. Um, I don't have cards in hand uh, and his board position's strong. So we're pretty much boned. We got a very good trade out of that Splitter Robot there though. It's three for one, um, which is definitely better than what <laughs> what we were doing before. Uh, like, like I said, Chain Lightning just completely brutalizes our deck. Uh, so if we manage to win this, then we actually have a pretty good setup uh, because we have a good game too. Like I, I said in the previous video, we have a strong sideboard against this deck, but uh, without that sideboard, we're pretty helpless. Uh, I think I'm gonna be trying to be a little more aggressive here. Um, he's probably setting up for mass death. Uh, there's no reason for him to pull out all of his guys, in my opinion. Um, so I'm probably going to pull at least some things back next turn. Uh, it'd be really nice if we drew into um, Taiga again. Uh, this is really unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to leave Luka on the battlefield and Splitter Robot on the battlefield. Uh, on the basis that we have more Lukas. I think we're going to just draw another card. And I think that's that's how we're going to leave it. Yeah, it's a math death, uh, which is fine for us right now. Uh, and this looks like a very good turn for us. We might be able to kill him. I don't think he's going to expect us to pull out an additional... like. So we've got uh, 20 damage between these guys, 26, uh, and then we have 9 more. So we've got uh, 35 damage. Um, and then multiply that by, or excuse me, not multiply that. Add uh, eight times five, 40. Um, so we can kill him this turn and he's not gonna expect it, I don't think. Uh, if he has another mass death, we lose, I'm pretty sure, from morale. So we might as well go big or go home, right? Um, and the question is, is it going to be more efficient for us to control Temporal Anomaly, his highest health defender away, or is it going to be better for us to play Taiga and try to generate some additional value? And I think I'm going to put away... Um, I think I'm going to put away this Aether Acolyte. Uh, he can kill us if we don't defend, but I think tying is actually... A, not a bad option for us. Um, I think we're, we'll do this. Okay, so is it another mass death? Because if it is, then we just we just lose. Yeah. Oh, well, that's Tinker combo for you. Uh, I mean. It sounds pretty lame if I do nothing but complain the whole video, uh, but my plan was queue up for ranked and show you guys, you know, how to pilot the deck that I am currently doing extremely well with on ranked ladder, but it just might not happen because Tinker Combo is such a dominant force. It's not this deck's counter either. It's just that it's a much better deck than most of the other decks out there. Um, like we have in our deck, uh, Disruption Sphere, which should theoretically just annihilate the Tinker Combo deck, but it doesn't most of the time. Um, I have played games where I have had two Disruption Spheres out and still lost, which is mind-boggling. Um, there's no better card in the game to counter Tinker Combo other than Disruption Sphere. Maybe some Exile's Hand Attack cards where you're just trying to get them to discard stuff, but even then. And I think we're going to have to take out Omnitron because it's too slow. We'll take out a uh, one of the Omni Mines for the same reason. Uh, and we might take out a Logarithmatron or a Martyr Golem on a similar basis. Because uh, Martyr Golem 
doesn't help us if we don't have a board developed. I think Logarithmatron's the smarter card to take out, though, so we'll do that. Now, ideally, we get our Disruption Spheres out as early as possible, but like I said, this deck is strong even in the early game uh, because it has uh, the ability to pump its creatures or characters up so easily. Um, good news is that we might actually be able to out-trade him uh, if we're lucky. Yep, we just we just won the lottery, guys. Uh, that could not have possibly gone better. As a matter of fact, I'm disturbed that he he considered doing that without at least I, I don't know. Like it was very telegraphed that when I when I pumped the support drone on turn one that I was planning on playing it on turn two, and that's that's the thing. The Tinker combo deck. To beat it, you have to kill these two Aether Acolytes as soon as possible, and he let his die. I'm okay with that. Uh, I might play Taiga here and try to get some cheesy uh, cannon fodders going. Um, I think I'm going to do that, because the odds are... So it unfortunately plays in a lightning blast, or uh, chain lightning, so maybe I won't. Um, why don't I instead... I'll do one of these guys. I'm going to overcharge a cannon fodder uh and we're gonna play a cannon fodder and pump it and we're not pumping support drone because it's basically as good as dead there's taiga down so it's uh, good that we didn't play taiga because we would have lost tempo uh it's better to have taiga die in the command zone than it is for taiga to die out because if taiga dies out we spent two resources playing it uh presumably for nothing um we're in very good shape though uh this means cannon fodder is next to useless because we don't have a way to put aoe buffs on it uh that we can see in the immediate future we're gonna pump up our adaptive construct to try to get it strong enough to trade with splitter robot or uh, aether acolyte provided that he kills the other support drone uh, and we're gonna pump the cannon fodder just because we're trying to get damage on him as fast as possible and he is out of desperation it seems defending with his splitter robot trading extremely poorly uh, like, if we think about the work that this guy did, he took out a support drone, an Aether Acolyte, and the first half of a Splitter Robot. Uh, so, he is, he is pulling his weight. Um, right here, uh, we look like we trade favorably. He probably doesn't have mass death available because he's at six resources, or five resources, not six. So we have no reason to pull our guys back. There's Overcharge Storm, but I'm under the impression that most people don't run that. Uh, if he does run it, then we're screwed. But uh, I, I think the correct decision is to go big or go home. Because um, we still haven't gotten our Disruption Spheres. Uh, we still have no gas in our hand. Um, so we're in actually really, really bad shape in terms of how the game plays out. We're in good shape in terms of our current board position, but um, it won't stay that way. Uh, and now these are both in lightning or chain, chain lightning range. Uh, we might pull back here because of mass death. We're gonna restock our hand. Um, I'm gonna put some characters out. I would rather uh, lose, you know, just just a few than. Um, and do some it's it's worth the risk is what i'm saying there's the mass death he hasn't played anything so it's mass death oh this could mean that he doesn't have access to mass death but he did just draw three cards so we have to play around it anyways we have disruption sphere now we are in very very good shape now um we're gonna put out our flyers i think i think we're gonna uh try pumping them we're going to pump one of them out of Chain Lightning slash Lightning Blast range. <sighs> As you can see, uh, uh, Disruption Sphere does affect us negatively in some cases, uh, but we only have 
um, controlled temporal anomaly, and we have um, the scouting drone producing card. But uh, disruption sphere puts us in such better shape than we were before. Uh, there's the chain lightning, like I said. Uh, Martyr golem is a good card for us to draw into right now. Um, I'm playing around mass death really heavily because we haven't gotten. So he can play Mass Death this turn. It will cost him his entire turn, though. So we're going to draw another card. Uh, we're just trying to uh, make sure we still have gas to win this game. Um, we're going to hold these back and try to get in for the maximum damage with these. Uh, actually, we're going to put in one more of these guys. Uh, so... This is, if he puts this to defend with, we can trade with between these two. He's gonna fire off a mass death, I think. He's just not getting the mass death. Or he's playing the most elaborate bait of all time where he's just, he's just saying, oh, someday you are gonna make the mistake of putting all your guys out. And I'm making the mistake now because I have scouting mission which gives me something to fall back onto. And if he hasn't thoroughly represented his lack of uh, mass death yet, then I don't know what's going on. Yeah, he's, he's, he doesn't have it. He just doesn't have it. Uh, and there's the death ray, which is unfortunate. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I, I initially had targeted um, the first adaptive construct with Alita, but I switched to the second one because it was a possibility that it could get death raid. Uh, these are coming back because they have no impact on the game at the moment. Uh, we're gonna fire off a martyr golem. We're gonna pump one of these guys. Uh, if chain lightning happens this turn, our martyr golem is gonna soak all the damage for us, which is very good. Yeah, there's the Chain Lightning. We have another Martyr Golem, which means uh, if he doesn't have like a Mass Death, I think we win because this is 12 damage. We can up that to 15. Um, play a Martyr Golem. Uh, we'll try to seal the deal. Well, actually, I guess the only way... Nah, let's, let's, let's try to seal the deal. Uh, the risk here is that he plays Mass Death. Finally, yes, yeah, it's probably what he's doing, and I just saved this guy. Ay, ay, ay. Um, I think we're still in good shape, though. Uh, I'm gonna put everybody out. Um, our our biggest. Asset has come out, which is Omnimind. At this stage in the game, I can make two unending drones a turn, and he does not have a way to deal with that. No number of mass deaths can save him from that. It's an inevitability factor, uh, which is very important for a deck like the one I'm using, um, which is, I think my deck is, is aggro to mid range uh, because it, it tries to be aggressive, but the good thing about it is if the game gets kind of stalemate -y, I can fall back on Omnimind, which produces characters that are hard to deal with, and they have low morale costs, so I don't have to worry about that. He can combo off now. Uh, Demon of Dark Bargain also nullifies the effect of... Uh, what do you call it? Um, nullifies the effect of Disruption Sphere, but it's dead, so... That's good news, and we're going to go ahead and just make uh, unending drones now. Um, I'm not going to play Treasure Hunter yet because I want to draw cards with him, uh, and I don't want to spend five and two. Five to put a card in my hand, and then two more to overcharge the card put in my hand. Uh, I would rather just start cranking this uh, Omnimind. He probably doesn't have a way to kill it. Uh, and that should win us the game. Oh, he's he's put himself to 11. So that indicates that he's probably going to play uh, 
the Calamity, which is a really, really stupid card in my opinion. Um, so we're not going to use Omni Mine because we have priority. Um, so we're actually just going to draw two cards this turn. We got another Disruption Sphere. Oh, I, I just forgot. He can't play Calamity because I have Disruption Sphere. That's right. I, I misplayed. Uh, I misplayed pretty badly, actually. Uh, we're at 100 health, though, so... If things are looking up for us, uh, we're... Oh, if we lose this, though, that would be at least in part because I misplayed. This guy's got four morale. I can't afford to play him anymore. <laughs> we're at 13 morale. We're going to lose to morale, uh, if anything. He cannot kill me. I don't know what he's doing. There's just no way. I don't think he can play enough spells, especially with the um, the, the two disruption spheres out. Uh, and we got to keep making unending drones. We cannot, I repeat, cannot afford to play the other cards in my hand. They are too high in morale and too easy to kill. Not even Luca I can play, even though Luca would be really nice right now. Um, we're just trying to end the game. He could tinker that, which would be unfortunate, but it'll cost him a lot of resources. Yeah, if we lose just a few more bots, we lose the game. Um, I might have to fire off Luca. If he plays Chain Lightning, I lose. How many Chain Lightnings has he played? One, two. If he plays Chain Lightning, I lose. Uh, I need to get through with two characters, essentially. Um, if I do this, that would be 9, that would be 15. If he doesn't kill anything, I win. If he does kill anything, I probably lose, tie at best. Um, so that might not be the best move. Uh, I might have to wait, but it, 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 this might actually be our best chance to win. So we'll go for it. We'll pray. He's defending. There's a tinker. There's another tinker. That's bad. We are at one morale now, which means uh, we lose to mass death. We lose to just about everything. How many mass deaths has he played? One. I think we're going to hold back for one turn. Stupid as it might be. Ay, ay, ay. But yeah, like I was saying, I have two disruption spheres out, and it might not matter. Uh, the deck is just so resilient, um, and if he plays anything that kills my guys, I lose. Um, I might as well fire off my treasure hunters because there's no drawback to them at the moment because their morale cost is just as high as anything else. I could uh, boost my guys... Um, but right now, the easiest guys for him to kill are is, is probably Luca. Uh, we're gonna boost him though. Okay, now now people might ask me why am I not playing this deck if it's so good. The answer is that I hate it. Um, I hate seeing it all the time. I don't want to play it. Uh, against, you know, other players. Uh, it feels bad to to play with and to play against because it's basically taking advantage of a, a, a poor card interaction, which is Aether Acolyte and Tinker. I mean, this these two factions are already very powerful, Genesis and Veror, and in combination it gets worse. Um, 
We lose to mass death. We should have fired things off last turn, but I figured the odds that he had it in his hand were pretty high. Uh, there's a very good chance that we lose right now, but we're going for it. He's trading post, so maybe he doesn't have an answer. We Yeah, we won. Jeez, though. Whew. And uh, it was in part because he put the wrong card in his deck. But yeah, he, he has access to artifact removal, so he can kill Disruption Spear, is pretty much what he's telling us. Uh, also, that game was slow enough that I think I'm going to put Omnitron back in and the other Omnimind. Uh, and I might take out both my Logarithmatrons. Um, the one good thing about Logarithmatron... Um, oh yeah, it would have been over way long ago. Yeah, it probably would have, because your deck is tier 1 and has no real counters. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah... Um, we're going to take out cannon fodder, put in that. Probably take out both cannon fodders. <sighs> this is the final game, though. Uh, hopefully it goes well for us. This hand is really subpar. That hand's a little better. It's still subpar. Let's see if he's nuts enough to make this trade again. I think the answer is probably not, so we're we're actually gonna be aggressive. If he was if he was crazy enough to try that twice, uh like my head would explode. Wouldn't be able to handle it. Yeah, he's not trying it twice. Uh, uh that feels bad. Um and now we are behind by a lot because his characters get bigger. Surprised he didn't um, play these this turn. Uh, we're actually gonna hold off on moving adaptive construct out for one turn, I think. Maybe two turns. I think getting out Omnimind and just starting to pu push out the unending drones might be my best plan right now. Um, I'm gonna try to play around Death Ray for one turn, or... Oh, he kidnapped that, okay. Um, we can get back our Alita, and we're gonna have to start pushing out unending drones. It's really our best option, I think. However, like he said, he put in three overloads, so he can destroy my Omni Mind and get uh, five damage on me, which is pretty substantial. Um, on any drone again. Uh, we have to defend ourselves. We're going to pitch Adaptive Construct, I think. Um, we're going to pump. Doesn't really matter what we pump. Nothing, it's not, it's, none of our cards are, are good to pump right now, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, I, might, I think I'm going to move Logarithmatron out, try to get better trades. Yeah, I kill this, hopefully. We've got our Disruption Sphere. And of course, it gets, you know, a lot more power and toughness, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Martyr Golem could help, potentially. 
Uh, more unending drones could also help. Uh, Disruption Sphere would be nice to play right now, but it makes us lose tempo, um, which is very unfortunate. Um, I think I'm just going to put out two unending drones. I want to be able to, to play defensively. And having the unending drones to fall back on makes it a lot easier to not die. Ay ay ay. The most aggressive controlled deck of all time is what we're looking at. Um, we might be able to surprise them with Luca might if we did um Luca and Martyr Golem and then we pray do we have any more unending drones in the graveyard we only have access to four right now which is unfortunate and at least we don't immediately lose uh from that chain lightning but I think we do still lose yeah all right, so that was that was a game. Uh, I was planning on this being a, a ranked commentary just to show you what uh, what it looks like to try to get to the top 25, which is my goal. Um, right now I am 18. I was 17 a minute ago, so I actually didn't move down by that much, and by that I mean I, I, I lost 50, which is brutal. Um, and we were playing against Liquid Avatar, who the reason we lost so much is he's probably much lower on the list. Um, let's let's look for him if he's on here. Um, oh. We can actually uh, check by I think adding him to friends and then clicking friends. Yeah, he is. 300 so he's played like he i think that was probably his one ranked game this season uh and it completely devastated my score uh which is not a good system um the rank system has its problems uh 